Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage Review Lab. I've got Kevin O'Brien with me again today, and we're breaking down a review that we just completed of an Asus Store NAS. Now we'll bring in this little guy. It's a 10-bay NAS, as you can see, desktop tower form factor. What's really cool about this one is it's got a lot of enterprise-type features throughout. We've got uh, an Intel Xeon E2224 CPU. That's a quad-core 3.4 gigahertz CPU. 8 gig of RAM, again the 10 drive bays in the front, and it's got two uh, M.2 bays inside for uh, caching or tiering. And we have looked at Asus Store uh, systems in the past, but we want to make sure, because it's been a little while uh, since we've done a, a deep look at the UI, that we go there and take a look at how uh, the system operates in comparison to you know, many of the other popular NAS systems that we look at. So Kevin's got the UI pulled up. What do you uh, find interesting here, Kevin? So it, it's like a lot of other NAS platforms. It's very easy to use. It's laid out with a nice tile uh, platform, and you can kind of hop into the different areas that you want to go into. We were looking at the uh, system information screen, and, uh, for example, you can pop into uh, Storage Manager, and see how you uh, currently have your disk provision. In this case, we have a uh, single drive uh, for volume one uh, and then a uh, two drive RAID one for our volume two. And going in there, we can uh, kind of see that uh, volume one is uh, sitting on uh, this particular SSD. And then the uh, we have two eight terabyte hard drives for uh, our RAID one group. Yeah, and so in our testing, you just ran several hard drives in the system because that's a typical use case. Now it looks like you've been playing around a little bit more with some flash and, and an odd combination of, of storage in here. Yeah, this was more for bringing it up a little bit, uh, a bit faster for the purposes of this video, but uh, we had uh, eight hard drives in there prior for a RAID 6 configuration, which is a pretty common uh, RAID group for a... Uh, uh, multi-bay NAS. Now, one of the things that uh, that's that is also neat about this, I think, from the feature set standpoint, is it's got a 10 gig port on the back, which with these tower units is sometimes hit or miss, whether it's integrated, whether it's available via PCIe Edge card. So you've got that available. Yeah, this guy includes uh, one port uh, and then uh, two, or has three of the uh, multi-speed ports. It's so 2.5s. One, 2.5, and five. Okay. Which we're starting to see those more on a lot of the uh, prosumer type of uh, NAS platforms. The one downside is. Um, at least for us, when we look at the enterprise space, there aren't a lot of enterprise switches that include 2.5 and 5 gig support. Yeah, not yet. It's coming, though, and in our conversations with the guys that make those components, the cost is negligible in terms of the difference between 1 and 2.5. But really, the question is, does the enterprise want 2.5 or need it? Because the servers probably never need it for their lifecycle controller Yeah, a lot of those guys, setups. everyone's gone to uh, 10G base T a lot for the onboard um, RJ45 ports. Right. And then now you have uh, a lot of servers just coming with like 25 gig native. And uh, when you're looking at a lot of the enterprise infrastructure, they find um, you're just not seeing the, uh, the multi-port uh, configurations. Although we did see is either uh, 2.5 or uh, 5 gig a second on some of the um, uh, the newer wireless access points in the enterprise space, just because those re certainly yeah th that reached up into that uh, performance range. In terms of enterprise switches, though, probably less so. Probably you'll see the fragmentation stay on one gig or 10 and up. Uh, but in the SMB switches, we're going to see a lot more 2.5 explicitly for devices like this that can yeah. take advantage of it. All right, so if we go back and take a look at the UI again, so we went through some of the storage features. Uh, anything else? How about that we were just talking about networking. Does anything else stand out to you in terms of network configuration on this on this guy? This guy, uh, a lot of these have been really easy to configure. So um, most of these, uh, you generally have areas for um, your uh, main settings, your information areas, your hardware configuration. Uh, and most of these are pretty easy to uh, pick up and go right off the bat. In this area, uh, under settings, we'll have uh, the network settings. We can go into network interface and uh, see in this case, we have uh, one LAN port configured uh, in our conference room right. and it's a one gig uh, interface. Uh, but through these, you get to see uh, the priority of the network interfaces, the interconnect speed, um, and just kind of 
flow through those areas where uh, you might need to change them in a uh, different production setting. And what's actually kind of cool with this particular uh, system is uh, on the front, um, since it has the onboard uh, or yeah onboard uh, management interface on the front, you can actually do certain configurations with it. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll, I'll poke it and wake that uh, wake that the screen up so you can take a look at that. Yeah, so on here you can um, uh, see what the network interface is, and uh, you can also uh, flow through this to kick off backups, uh, do different configurations. This is where you can actually, if you really wanted to and had uh, and absolutely needed to, you can set a uh, static IP address specifically through those uh, four buttons at the front. And it's kind of similar to what you find on some of the enterprise servers where you might move it into a uh, different network, uh, different environment or a different production setting and maybe you need to go from a static IP that's pre-configured or switch it to a DHCP address to make it um, uh, aware on that network sure. and then switch it to a new uh, static IP. I was pushing those buttons and I was doing it upside down to not block it. I almost shut it down, I think. I think it gives a delay for have, uh, to going <laughs> through it, but um, yeah, there are, there are certain areas where it's kind of fun with these where uh, you don't really know what's going on. They might be a little bit delayed, but it's nice to have. Yeah, well, I think from day zero setup, when you power the thing on to be able to cycle through to kick off the configuration, like for me, that's kind of the nice thing from the display perspective. Yeah, and a lot of these, even though the manufacturer includes a uh, kind of like a finder software utility to discover on the network. Yeah, but just to dial is, into the IP takes two seconds. Yeah, you'll see it right away and be like, okay, well, I get it's on a slash 16 or slash 24 network and you figure out what's exact IP address is. Well, how many times have I heard you cursing or me cursing over using those finder apps and then it's like the thing is not on your network? It's sitting right next yeah. to me on the floor. It's on the network, and it still it doesn't always work. Yeah, so it's nice to have it if you need it. All right, let's take a look at the performance uh, on this guy and just remind us what we put in this thing from a testing standpoint. So we used uh, fourteen. Uh, we used the fourteen terabyte uh, WD Red hard drives, and those are um, they're kind of prosumer, uh, non enterprise sure. models, but. Um, we had a uh, RAID 6 environment going with those, uh, which is fairly common. You'd want some resiliency in there if a uh, disk failed. And from a performance perspective, um, you're not going to get the highest performance out of a group of hard drives. That's where <clears throat> you bring in cache, you bring in SSDs. But uh, with that said, it did perform pretty well, kind of right. in, lines, uh, in line with our expectations. And we tested over the uh, single 10 gig port. In our 4K random uh, random workload, uh, we saw around 2,300 IOPS uh, write and uh, around 600 or so uh, read for iSCSI. And then uh, uh, SIFS performance kind of uh, third, uh, got around a third of the uh, read IOPS and uh, roughly similar on the uh, write IOPS, which is it's pretty common when you look at random workloads on uh, hard drives. But uh, when we look down at the sequential workloads, uh, we were able to uh, get in the range of over 100,000 IOPS uh, read and uh, write, which for a lot of these things, when you're looking at uh, kind of office performance levels, you're moving around large files, you're dragging and dropping, you're moving like media files, sure. large PDFs, things like that. A lot of these guys are going to see mostly sequential performance. That's where uh, the main advantages come through. Well, all that performance too, and you've got what, up to 140 terabytes of raw capacity in this little tower unit? That's pretty strong with yeah, 14 terabyte drives. Yeah, and I think you can expand that out with a uh, expansion yeah. unit. So yep. if you need to, you can expand it pretty well. And if we look down at our uh, large block sequential transfers, we effectively saturated the uh, 10 gig port on um, our SIS connection, and then uh, read performance is a bit lower on iSCSI. Write performance is pretty good. But... Um, the main bottleneck really just becomes networking. And if we wanted to put a couple M.2 drives in there for caching, where would you expect that performance uh, to pop up given the, the single 10 gig port limitation? So the main advantages that you find with uh, adding flash into this would be the random workloads. So that's where any hotspots start to go on flash instead of the hard drives and performance you know, dramatically. And that's where it actually throws the scale off a lot on these charts where um, hard drives are gonna be much higher in latency and um, lower on throughput. And then the flash stuff is just gonna be dramatically or exponentially faster. 
So what we really like with this is a pretty good performance profile, even with hard drives, uh, expandability, the single 10 gig port, the M.2 SSDs inside. If there's a complaint, it's what, maybe one more 10 gig port, maybe uh, Synology and QNAP have a little more app support third party in their in their app stores in the in the UI. Yeah, or uh, maybe if it's more flash oriented, a uh, specific bay on the front to use a two and a half inch uh, SSD or right. something like that. But yeah, I do love those two and a half inch bay or two and a half inch SSD bays on the front where you can dedicate those drives. But again, it just comes down to what you want. If it's capacity with pretty good performance and enterprise features like 10, 10 gig and a Xeon processor, then this is not, not yeah. such a bad guy. Yeah, it works out pretty well. Okay. All right, thanks for tuning in for this review, and we'll be back soon with another one.